I want. It's a simple statement, but it means so much. It tells you everything about a person you need to know when you're watching them in a musical. And because of this, we have seen many, 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 many musicals declare the character's want in a big moment known as the I Want Song. It's in Disney Renaissance musicals. It's in stage shows like Hamilton. And now we come to the question, the question we were always going to come to, which one's the best? Is there a clear way to find out, to scientifically determine what is the best song of all time? No, but I can do it in my own way with a bracket. Welcome back to Chaos Brackets. Welcome back to this one. Wowie, it's on the screen right now. Look at it. I, uh, It's above me. Ah, uh, We are going to have musical theatre I want songs fight to the death to find out which is the best one. We may find that two of the greatest I want songs go up against each other in the first round and... That's just going to be too bad, but in the end, one winner will remain, and that will be determined the best I want song of all time. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Ellie. I talk about theatre. I am the most chaotic theatre person on the internet. I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays, and if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me. It helps out the channel. But let's start this fight with our first pairing, the wizard. Uh, oh. I haven't started the bracket yet. Let's start this bracket off with The Wizard and I from Wicked and The First Time in Forever from Frozen. This is a tough pairing, I've got to say. First Time in Forever is a great I Want song with two different perspectives. It's mostly from Anna's, you know, you're getting, you're getting your little pieces here of the puzzle of uh, how she's felt with Elsa kind of shutting her out. She's just gone for a tragedy, losing her parents, and now finally she's waited and waited and waited for that taste of freedom and she's about to get it. Meanwhile, Elsa is a little bit more, you know, in with herself. She, she doesn't really want to, uh, you know, let her power show and have be shunned by the kingdom. There's a lot of pressure on her shoulders. She wants this day to go off without a hitch so she can go back and close those doors again and, and say goodbye. So there's, there's a lot of perspectives here that we're getting. But Wizard and I, oh, Stephen Swartz is good at writing an I Want song. Like, you get the build-up with that, you get the excitement that she feels, the, the passion that Elphaba has in that moment. I'm not even that much of a Wicked fan myself, but even I have to admit that The Wizard and I is the strongest musical theatre song out of these two. It, will, it, will it get further? I don't know. But out of these two, it's stronger. Belle from Beauty and the Beast and If I Were a Rich Man from Fiddler on the Roof. Two strong songs. Now, the thing about Belle is that it, it's an I Want song mixed with an opening number. You know, you, 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 you meet all the townspeople, it's, it's giving you the context, it's setting things up, but throughout that you're getting, you're getting little sprinkles, little sprinkles and hints of Belle and her character and who she is as a person, what she wants. She wants more than this provincial life. She's slagging off all of these town people while she's singing an opening number. And if that's not queen sh I don't know what is. <laughs> Then again, If I Were a Rich Man from Fiddler is another great I Want song. You really get a sense of like him building up more and more and more. He kind of takes you and he's like, if, you know, if I could do this, if I could do that. And he's thinking of more and more things that come to him at the top of his head. And it's just also a bop. I'm not going to lie. I feel like if we're talking about what is the better I Want song, I adore Belle. I adore Belle. Belle is high up on the Disney I Want Song tier list. And if you want that, if you want a tier list of all the Disney I Want songs, I'll do it. Comment below. I'll do it. But I feel like in this case, Disney has lost out twice because I'm going with If I Were a Rich Man. Okay, but if Disney have a chance to get back and, and win one, it is with this round. Now, if you have not listened to Almost There from Princess and the Frog, it is one of my favorite songs of all time. So already I think I'm giving you a little hint of what's gonna win here. You get a, a perfect sense of Tiana's passion and what she wants to achieve. 
And like, she knows she's going to do this. She's like, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm almost there. And as well as just being like a really cool jazzy number. And I love a bit of jazz. Compared to its challenger, You and Me But Mostly Me, it's a nice comedy song. Uh, Book of Mormon is is great at these moments where it kind of like pulls the rug out from under you. You get this kind of typical I want song where he's starting out and he's like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to be the best. But you know what? I'm going to be I'm going to be the bestest one. I think it's a great introduction as well as telling you what uh, Elder Price wants. Also showing you his folly and his downfall and the lack of respect he kind of has for his partner. I I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. What wins, though, I feel like it's got to be almost there from Princess and the Frog. I love that song, okay? Uh, you and Me Mostly Me is, is a fun one. And I feel like if it was paired up with a different, different partner, it may have got a bit further. Here, I've got to go with my favorite. Because, you know, this is just opinion. If you disagree, you can comment what, who would win in your case. Somebody did that last video. Somebody did like a full like breakdown of everyone that would win in there in if they were doing it. And I thought that was sick. So you can go do that. Feel like this from the little big things and dust and ashes from the great comet. Now, this is a pairing of a very typical like I, I, I call it an I want song, but it's a it's kind of more of a I don't want things to change song. I, I want everything to stay like this. I want to be in this moment forever. That's that's the one that Henry feels at that point. And then Dust and Ashes is this masterpiece. <laughs> it, it's just this, this soaring moment where you get a true sense of Pierre, his his lot in life and everything that's kind of weighing on him. Oh, I feel like it's a clean sweep for Dust and Ashes, but I feel like this, I, I want to give some love to Little Big Things because it is a good song. And it's, I think out of both of these, which one would I listen to more? It's more likely feel like this. But if you're immersed in the show and in that moment and talking about what is a stronger I want song, probably Dust and Ashes. Waiting for life to begin from What's in This Island versus Buenos Aires from Evita. Two strong I want songs. Oh, okay. I feel like I think this might be the only Lloyd Webber representation on this list. And it's up against another one of my favorite songs of all time. Oh, OK. Buenos Aires, I feel like is, an, is a nice song that kind of gives you a different side to Evita and a, a very important one where you're seeing her in this moment, you know, living her life and getting exactly what she wants. Waiting for Life to Begin, I feel like is a stronger I want song. It gives you a, a nice sense of to Moon, her place in life and feeling like she's bigger than where she is and waiting for that purpose. She really wants that purpose, that that sign from the gods, why they saved her. And like it's like a begging song and you get a sense of, you know, the different things she's interested in. I feel like this is clean sweep for waiting for life to begin. I don't know. I just like it more. Oh no, it's Menken versus Menken, baby. Part of your world from Little Mermaid versus Somewhere That's Green from Little Shop of Horrors. Oh no. Oh no, this is this is a really good pairing. I would probably say that Part of Your World is my favorite Disney I Want song. And Somewhere That Green is is really high up on the I Want songs from like general musical theater. Somewhere that's green has such a beauty about it. I love this moment in the show where it really slows down and just gives you a wider sense of Audrey's character. But part of your world, I mean, what a way to perfectly set up Ariel. It's 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 killing me inside because I want someone that's going to go further. But I'm sorry, there is no beating part of your world. We have a Disney matchup next. Santa Fe from Newsies. Now I'm taking specifically the uh, version from the end of Act One because it's it's still an I Want song, even though the opening of the show is more of an I Want song. Versus Out There from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Out There's a great song. Out There's fantastic. 
it's it's soaring it's beautiful it's powerful but i feel like out of the two santa fe gives you a better sense of jack kelly he's at his lowest moment really he's like his friends have just all been like beaten and and he's completely lost and he's going back and falling back onto that dream uh, I don't know. I don't know which one to give it to. My gut is telling me that Santa Fe. And you know what it is? It is just that final note. It's it's just nothing if he ain't got Santa Fe. And, and when you think of like, uh, you know, Jeremy Jordan belting that note, deceased. And that is what out there from Hunchback is now because uh, it's not continuing on this list. <laughs> My shot from Hamilton versus Reflection from Mulan. Two very different styles of I Want Song. I feel like I've got to give Reflection from Mulan extra points because of the fact that, you know, it, it can be seen as a trans allegory, but also My Shot is such a perfect moment of showing exactly who Hamilton is. Like you get a sense of like, how much passion he has as well as giving you like the insecurities the quieter moments in there as well where he's reflecting on his childhood you it, it, it's this really nice moment where it humanizes alexander hamilton for the first time in the musical my gut is telling me that this is a win for hamilton and if i could give it to both i would we've done one side next side uh, Roxy from Chicago or Purpose from Avenue Q. I mean, Purpose is a cute song. It's very, it, it's one of the songs from Avenue Q that doesn't really carry any heavy punches. Like it's not that comedic. It has some cute staging, but for a, for a musical that's like first and foremost a comedy, nah, eh. Roxy. I love Roxy. I love the song Roxy. You, you've, you've had, you've had like Funny Honey. You've had Subot Tango. You've had the relationship between her and Velma bubble up, and you, you get, you get a real sense of like what she wants and the passion to be on stage. I feel like it's got to be Roxy. Like Purpose was gonna lose to like anything on here. I like Purpose. It's a cute song, but is it, is it like great for the musical it's in? Not really. Waiting on a Miracle from Encanto or Waving for a Window from Dear Van Hansen. I feel like it's a shame for Dear Van Hansen because, you know, I, Waving for a Window got very overplayed. Whereas Waiting on a Miracle from Encanto was one of like the quieter songs that didn't really explode. But when you listen to it and when you go back to the soundtrack of Encanto, you realize how strong that song actually is. When you're talking about setting up Mirabelle's story and giving her a moment to really reflect on feeling like an outsider to her family, Waiting on a Miracle is perfect. She she knows what she's lacking. She she doesn't really feel respected in her family. And yeah, there's there's so much in there and there's so much meat on the bones of that song. I'm surprised it didn't really go as far as some other ones. Waiting for a Window, I, I, I don't want to dismiss it. I don't want to dismiss it because it's also really, really good. There's, there's a lot in there about Evan, again, in a similar way, feeling left out and feeling like he hasn't really found his place in a way. This was a good pairing. I, I shuffled this. I did not put these together, but this is a good pairing. Like similar themes and things. I prefer Waiting on a Miracle, but I do admit that Waving for a Window is a strong I Want song. Uh, why is this harder than, than some of the other pairings? I don't know. Uh, let's go with, uh, Waving for a Window is more iconic. Should it be? I don't know, but that's what I'm going with to make this decision. Waiting on a Miracle deserve better, but uh, Waving for a Window is going to go to the next round here. Journey to the Past from Anastasia or Proud of Your Boy from Aladdin. One I Want song that was cut by Disney and one I Want song that everyone thinks is Disney but is not until Disney then bought the company that made it. So technically it now is Disney but it wasn't Disney. This is making my head hurt. Pony Boy is great. I, I want to say that first and foremost and I feel like that is writing on the wall for it but... Proud of Your Boy is, is a lovely song. It's sweet. It's a nice moment for Aladdin. And, you know, it kind of shows some of his motivation. Does it really 
lead into much else for him in the musical? I'm not sure. I mean, he does make something for himself. Uh, yeah, I guess you've got that. But Journey to the Past, man, they knocked it out of the park for that show. I do prefer in the film where it comes a little bit earlier. Uh, generally, because I, I like my I Want songs to come a little bit earlier. But it's so, it's so lovely and so sweet. And I feel like it's going to be my winner of this round. Thank you. Next up, uh, my own little corner from uh, Rogers and Hammerstein's version of Cinderella. See, it's not all Disney. And one that I feel like a lot of people are not going to know, uh, Donny Nowitzki from Bandstand. I have this on this list because it, it's, it's a great I Want song. And also, I want to talk about Bandstand a little bit. Despite one of its cast members being a little bit, mm, Bandstand is, is, is a great musical that I wish more people would know. Especially because it's a jazz musical. And there is not enough jazzy musicals and I love a jazz musical. I want more jazz musicals in the West End. And Bandstand's great. Bandstand is so good. Honestly, Bandstand would be great, like actor muso. That would be great. Give me an actor muso version of Bandstand, please. Uh, all of my talking of Bandstand has probably shown you that I really want Bandstand to win this. So does Bandstand win this? My Own Little Corner is, is one of the most iconic I Want songs of all time. And you can see why. It's it's lovely. It's, it's a great dive into... Her, you know Cinderella and you know this version of her and how she gets optimism out of her situation and it's sweet you know it's cute if, if you have a child who needs to sing an I want song for a concert this is a perfect one to give them is it my favorite no but then maybe because I don't have as much attachment to Roger and Hammerstein Cinderella. If this was against a more heavy hitter, I feel like it would be one and done. However, it's against Donny Nowitzki, which is a nice song, but not my favorite from Bandstand. I think what you get from it though is you get a sense of this person who's come out from a really harsh war and feels like he's missed his chance a little bit. But he knows he's talented. He has so much like passion and confidence in himself. And he's like, I can do, I can walk circle. I can, I can run circles around these other people if I'm just given the chance. That's his want in this song. He wants a chance. Is it a surprise that I'm going to give this to Donny Nowitzki? Uh, probably not. Is, are people going to be mad at me because I didn't put Roger and Hammerstein through to the second round? Also, probably. <laughs> I just like the jazzy musical, okay? <laughs> oh, I haven't seen a clean sweep as clean as this for a very long time. We have Over the Rainbow from Wizard of Oz, probably the most iconic I Want song of all time, versus This Wish from Wish. <laughs> no, no, I, do, I don't, I don't just want to, you know, be rude about Wish, because, you know, there are there are things about Wish that are, that are OK. <laughs> uh, this Wish is 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 fine. It's it's a fine I Want song. Some of the lyrics are a little bit messy and I, I don't think it gives you a real sense of Usher's character because the the I Want is so vague in a way, whereas Over the Rainbow Oh my god, what a beautiful song. It's iconic for a reason. It's iconic for a reason. Do we even need to talk about Over the Rainbow? I don't think we do. <laughs> you all know it, you all love it. It's sweet, it's a lovely ballad. It, it brings you on the journey. It tells you about Dorothy and sets you up for the journey she's about to go on. What Baking Can Do from Waitress versus One Song Glory from Rent. What very contrasting songs. <laughs> One Song Glory, I, I enjoy that song. I feel like there, there's other songs from Rent I enjoy more, but One Song Glory is a nice kind of exploration of Roger. You know, there's a lot of backstory to Roger that we don't really see too much in the musical. You know, we know he's suffering with AIDS. We know that he is getting over the loss of his ex who's passed away. And we know that he's desperately trying to write this one song, this one song, Glory, one song before I go. That's his like drive for this. He he needs this one song. What they can do from Waitress is really interesting in the fact that she's, you know, just found out that she's pregnant. She doesn't want to be pregnant and she's escaping into her, her art form, I guess, in a similar way to how he's escaping into an art form. You know, one's a song, one's a pie. They're both delicious. Let's go. <laughs> I think both are great songs. 
personally, my favorite is what bacon can do. That's just my favorite. Yours might be the other one. Yes, some people and corner of the sky. Now I've got to say my attachment to Pippin is less as my attachment to the other musical in this discussion. You know, I'm more of a Sondheim girly. What's interesting is that I wonder if this is going to change when I see the Pippin concert, you know, next week. Because, uh, you know, from my perspective, I like Corner of the Sky. It's a sweet song and it's a nice setup for Pippin himself. You know, it, he's, he wants his Corner of the Sky. He wants his place in the world. You know, he, he, wants, he wants that. On the other side, we have Some People, which I don't think is my favorite song from that show, but I feel like it's a strong one. And I think it's perfect for showing you Mama Rose's absolute passion and drive and what she's saying she's doing it for despite what's behind that and we kind of get a sense of this is more for her than actually for her kids but corner of the sky is so iconic and i feel like after i've seen the concert of pippin at the end of this month which is actually really soon i should probably book a train ticket i feel like my answers might have changed then for now where i'm sitting right now which is in this chair doing this this ranking I'm putting some people up above. Just Breathe from The Prom and Who I'd Be from Shrek. This is our last pairing of round one. And if you would believe it, this is an easy sweep for Shrek. Shrek the musical has never been one of my favorites, okay? I think it can be cute if done well. It needs a bit more spectacle to make it work. And I think it doesn't really capture a lot of what made the film work as someone who absolutely adores both Shrek and Shrek 2. You know, like that was my childhood. That was my childhood right there. But if there is one exception to that, it's Who I'd Be, which is too good for the Shrek musical. It is one of the best songs of all time. Honestly, if you're making me write out my top 20 songs of musical theater of all time, it would be in there. Who I'd Be from Shrek is a perfect exploration of his character is a beautiful moment and a great way to end act one. It's the first time in the musical, despite the fact that he sings before, that we really get this moment of Shrek opening up. He's been a very closed off character this entire show, so it's a very poignant moment when he finally does. Just Breathe is cute, it's nice, it sets up, you know, those characters there and the situation that Emma finds herself in, but you know, it, who I'd be. Who I'd be is so good. Now that we've gone through all of them once, we can do the next rounds a little bit quicker and find out who our winner is. Wizard and I versus If I Were a Rich Man. I feel like I'm gonna give it to Wizard and I. I feel like it's close with me personally. If I Were a Rich Man is probably the song I prefer, but as an I want song, I feel like Wizard and I gives you a clearer sense of who Alphabet is. Almost There versus Dust and Ashes. Oh, those are both really good. But if I'm leading with what is a stronger I want song and my personal bias of what's my favorite, almost there gets through to the next round. Waiting for Life versus Part of Your World. Ironically, both from musicals about the Little Mermaid. One being in The Little Mermaid and the other being What's in This Island, which is an adaptation of The Little Mermaid. It's very fitting that these two have been paired together, but also very hard for me because these two are really good songs. I've got to give it to Part of Your World. Uh, Santa Fe versus My Shot. I'm going to give it to Santa Fe, another uh, Disney show getting into the next round. I love Hamilton. This is this this is a great song and one of the most iconic songs from Hamilton. Oh, it hurts me to say it, but Santa Fe is winning. Okay, next up, Roxy from Chicago, Waiting for a Window for Darren Hansen. I'm going to give it to Roxy, personally, a song that I prefer more. And I already gave Waiting for a Window a pass against one of my favorites, so I'm giving myself this one. Journey to the Past from Anastasia or Donnie Nowitzki. Let's give it to Journey to the Past. Over the Rainbow, what Bacon can do. I feel like because of it's just how iconic it is, it has to be over the rainbow. Some people versus who I'd be. I'm going to give it to who I'd be. I don't know. It's it's a really good I want song. Trust me, if you haven't watched Shrek, don't just go listen to who I'd be. Next round, we've got the, is it semifinals or the semi-semifinals? I think this might be the semi-semifinals. Wizard and I versus Almost There. Wizard and I is a great I want song. So is Almost There. You get a great sense of Elphaba, but I feel like when you're talking about which one is a stronger I want song, I actually prefer Almost There. 
Okay, Palio World versus Santa Fe. I feel like Santa Fe is the stronger song, maybe? I mean that in the sense of like the power behind it. Like it's it's got the belts, it's got the the big moments, whereas Part of Your World is a little bit more like inward, is a bit more, you know, reflective. Kind of like the sea. <laughs> I feel like part of your world is stronger. Roxy from Chicago or Journey to the Past? If you're asking me what's a stronger kind of setting up of the I want, I feel like it's Journey to the Past. Over the rainbow versus who I'd be, is this going to be the one to the feet Shrek? No. <laughs> no. I'm sorry, people, people are gonna be so confused why a song from Shrek the Musical is climbing this high. But it's a really good song. <laughs> I feel like the iconic status is what's making this really hard for me because it, out of these two, my favorite is 100% Shrek. Somewhere Over the Rainbow is a nice I Want song, but I'm giving it Shrek. This is this is my ranking. I can do what I want. <laughs> All right, semi-finals. Let's go. Almost There versus Part of Your World. You're really making me destroy one of my babies here, aren't you? You've... <laughs> Tearing this away from me. This is not fair. <laughs> Almost There is probably my favorite Disney song. I, I feel like that that is clear to say right now. It's, it, it's probably my favorite Disney song. Part of Your World is a really strong I want song. What is going to win? This is my personal opinion. I could just make it my favorite. But then what's the point? What's the point of framing this video as what is the best I want song if I'm not following through and saying what the best I want song is? That is not fair. These are great arguments coming from me, myself and I, because I'm trying to pick desperately. And I feel like I'm gonna stick through it. I'm gonna go for it. Part of your world is better. And journey to the past versus who I'd be from Shrek. Don't laugh. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't, don't laugh at me. Don't, don't laugh at me. I'm giving it to Shrek. <laughs> But, but listen, 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 put down your pitchforks. I'm not Shrek. I'm just giving the win to Shrek, okay? Who I'd be is great. And I like it. <laughs> and, and the three-way harmony is good at the end. And it's a great end of act one. And it's a great moment to really show you Shrek and, and the way that he's growing as a person. Ogre thing. Ogre. Man. Ogre. Ogre man. <laughs> And now we come to our final decision. If you had told me that who I'd be from Shrek would get this high, I thought it was gonna get knocked out by something else. I don't know how it's got this high, but it has, and I've got to live with that now. Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid, one of the best Disney Renaissance songs ever written versus Who I'd Be from Shrek. In your personal opinion, which would win out of these two? Is it one that's not in the finale? Probably. Because I, I don't think Who I'd Be From Shrek is on anyone else's radar. <laughs> maybe maybe all the Who I'd Be lovers are gonna are gonna come out of the, the woodwork and I'm gonna I'm gonna find out I'm not alone in this. And it's very funny for being from a musical I don't really like that much. <laughs> Let's be perfectly honest here. Despite the fact that I love Who I'd Be From Shrek, I don't think it can be The Little Mermaid. It's just, it brings you into Ariel's struggles so perfectly and shows you what she's wishing for. It is a perfect example of what the Renaissance films were going for with I Want Songs. I think my winner has to be Part of Your World from The Little Mermaid, the best I Want Song of all time from the ones that I picked for this specific list. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is there a song that I missed that you feel like is a better I want song? Is there a song that went out in the first round that you think should win it all? This was honestly the hardest one of these I've done so far. If you have any other ideas for things that I can versus in this format, let me know. I might do it in the future. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting subscribe. It really helps me out. It helps out the channel. Here's some links to some other videos on screen right now and a link to my Instagram. I want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.